Hey everyone, it's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid, special live pop-up Friday night episode for all of our subscribers and for those that are not here, which is everybody, because <laughs> there's zero viewers. Um, for those that are not here, welcome when you see it later. For those that will be here, welcome when you see it now. But uh, thanks for joining me. So the, uh, the reason I, I wanted to uh, do this video was I had uh, decided to put up a poll and I want to show you my poll right now. <laughs> I know it's stupid. My, my maturity level is like ridiculously small. Um, but we put up a poll of the most significant dates of the life and or death of uh, Billy Bonnie. And we had people vote on it and they've got 122 votes. And so I, uh, I thought it would be good to review this. So I'm going to show you this now. We're going to discuss them. Hey, Karen. Uh, hey, Ben. So uh, we'll discuss this. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly open. Here's the thing. We talked about this a little, a little ways back. Uh, you don't, you don't ha debate facts. You debate opinions, and you may have opinions on the the circumstances surrounding facts. This is just a, a purely an opinion piece. The dates we know are concrete, but which one is the most significant in uh, in the history of Billy the Kid, the legend of Billy the Kid, the life of Billy the Kid? Um, that's totally up to your and or my opinion. So we can debate this if you want. I'm not really interested in the debate, but I am interested in hearing what you have to say. But right now I'm going to show you this, my big poll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a moron I am. Yeah. Anybody who says that is right. Absolutely right. All right. So this poll <clears throat> was named, uh, was uh, t titled, Which Date is Most Important in the History? And that was uh, chosen very carefully, the history of Billy the Kid. Now, th the history is different than the legend, and the legend and the history are somewhat different than the life. <clears throat> so you can figure that out any way you want. I'll explain, I guess, as I go. But I put five dates here that I thought were important. The poll will only allow five answers, five responses. I realize you could probably put 10 or 15 or 20 dates on here and you could uh, make a determination of which one. Let me make this a little, let me make my poll a little bigger so you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Uh, all right. There you go. So uh, now you have a, a better uh, better look at it. Um, <clears throat> so I picked the five that I thought were significant. It doesn't mean that that any others were not. It just means that's the only um, option I had. Five answers. And these go uh, in chronological order, starting with earliest February 18, 1878 to latest July 14, 1881. But there was another significant date here, and I'll explain to you why I left it out. But you, our, our loyal viewers, and especially Paul Murphy said, oh, hold on there. The earliest one, the one that should be considered in the history of Billy the Kid as being the most significant date, September 16th, 1874. And that, of course, is the day that Catherine Antrim, after a very long battle with tuberculosis, succumbed to it and died. And, um, so, uh, the, uh, the, the reason this one wasn't on there is not because I didn't think it was significant, but Billy, the kid wasn't Billy, the kid yet. Now, Paul said, um, uh, or somebody said, you know, th this is, uh, that's kind of the one that maybe set him off course, uh, or on course to becoming an outlaw. And it could very well be. So, if you want to add this as a number six choice, you can't vote on it on the poll, but uh, you certainly could, you could do a write-in vote. I would say it's obviously a very significant day. Um, I've heard, well, I, you may have heard the saying that uh, you don't become a man until your father dies. Um, my dad passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, I mean, I, I, I consider myself a man, but um uh, but it was a different experience to to live in a world 
one day when he was here and then the next day when he was not. And I, w- I am not a young man, so it's, it happened late in my life. For Billy, this happened at somewhere, potentially around 12 or 13 years old. Um, so September 16th, 1874, a very significant day. But the criteria that I use for determining the most important day, if, if there's even, if you can narrow it down to one, is could William Bonney still have turned back? In other words, could he still have had the opportunity to go a different direction than he went? Um, and at at this early date, I would say yes. Yes, relatively quickly afterward, he began getting involved in some petty crimes, Sombrero Jack uh, among his accomplices, and was arrested a couple times for it. Um, was not living with William Antrim, who deserted the family for for all intents and purposes, uh, and was hanging out with his friend Chauncey Truesdale and Tony Connor and working and you know going to school. But he he clearly very quickly had the leanings of turning toward the dark side. I don't know that that was a lack of his mother's supervision. It could be. I just don't know. But I I know some bad people that had very good parents and very good upbringings. So I don't think you can always say that there's a uh, a direct connection between the way somebody's brought up and the way that they turn out. There probably is a lot of the time, but not all of the time. And some of those people I actually knew personally that turned out pretty bad despite a pretty good upbringing. So that would be your first date. If you want to vote for that one, we'll go ahead and just plug it in the uh, comments and uh, you can put September 16, 1874 as the most significant date in the history of Billy the Kid. Uh, Ben says, birthday as yet uncertain, death date July 81 and perhaps mother's death day. Okay, so maybe those would be your, uh, your top three, Ben. Um, and the birthday, of course, we are not yet certain. Um, and may- maybe someday we will be. But let's take a look at the poll. 122 votes so far. It's been up for uh, I don't know, about 24 hours or so. And it's a runaway as far as what you believe um, was the most significant date. That's July 14, 1881, because that's, <laughs> I-, I guess it's the most significant day in Billy the Kid's life because it's the the day he was de-lifed, right? I mean, shot and killed by Pat Garrett. And so that is significant, although it's not my number one. And I'll explain why as we get there. But let's start with the earliest. This was our number three vote getter, 13%. That's probably, I don't know, 15, 16 votes or something like that. February 18, 1878. As we all know, that's the day John Henry Tunstall was murdered in Tunstall Canyon, just to the uh, south of Lincoln, uh, New Mexico, on his way back to Lincoln with his regulators trying to protect what's left of his business. Uh, Tunstall is murdered in cold blood, uh, even if he drew his gun, which is pretty suspect, but he might have. Uh, Even if he drew his gun, he was still murdered in cold blood. He was pursued, oh, 100 yards off of the trail, uh, abandoned by his regulators, and uh, assassinated. And the reason that that's uh, probably that people pick that as the number three is because Tunstall was uh, seemingly an important person in the life of Billy the Kid. Now, we weren't there, so we don't know. I speculate that um, that Tunstall wasn't all that important to Billy the Kid. I think the job with Tunstall, the, the people he met through Tunstall, the uh, future he saw of being associated with people that had their own ranches. Yeah, they stole a little bit. They did a few bad things. But I think Billy fell in having come from the Jesse Evans gang to what would become the regulators. I think Billy saw, hey, wait a minute. I This is the kind of the life I think that I wanted to live or thought I wanted to live when I was younger. I don't know that I wanted to be a horse thief and pursued and have to look over my shoulder all the time. So I personally this is just my belief and again so beliefs debate all you want uh, i don't see that billy and tunstall were very close tunstall never mentions billy in any of his letters home or any correspondence whatsoever um and uh, all we have is you know kind of an anecdote or remembrance that billy kind of swore over the casket that 
uh, you know, that he would get some of them before he died. But we don't know that everybody didn't swear that over Tunstall's casket, nor do we know that that actually even happened. Um, so pretty significant date. And you can certainly say this, if this doesn't happen, if Tunstall goes on, he runs a store, he and Dolan become competitors, but they don't kill each other. Uh, Billy probably spins off at some point, opens uh, a little or uh, starts a little ranch. He was saving some land with Fred Waite, as I remember, somewhere in the Penasco. And maybe he gets into rustling to add to his herd. Maybe not. Maybe he marries and settles down, has a couple kids and uh, and and just lives his life out in New Mexico or Texas um, like some of the uh, the rest of the regulators did. Uh, without this date, this February 18, 1878, I do think that we have no idea who Billy Bonney is. Um, he doesn't get sucked into the vortex that will become the Lincoln County War, and he is not then associated with the people he'll meet through the Lincoln County War uh, on both sides. Uh, and Bob Ollinger, one of those, uh, you know, and develops a hatred for him that really uh, highlights one of these other dates. So uh, there you go. Important, yes. The most important uh, for me, I say no. And I say Tunstall probably knew Billy's name and probably said hi to him and shook his hand a couple of times. And that probably was it, but that's my opinion. Okay. April 1st, 1878, April fool's day. We all know that that's the day that Sheriff uh, William Brady is shot and killed on the main street of Lincoln. And uh, we've seen the recreation of that <laughs> regardless of what you believe about it. Uh, only 3%. I mean, that's four votes, I think. So not many people felt that this one, was important. Uh, this is the day that Billy and five other regulators will uh, ambush and assassinate Brady, uh, George Hinman, and um, oh gosh, what's the other guy? Uh, Long, Deputy Jack, was it Jack Long, who gets wounded uh, on the main street of Lincoln. And as our buddy Drew Gomber told us, this was uh, probably a very impromptu, you had the hothead faction there, and they were getting ready to ride out of uh, Lincoln and here comes Brady and somebody got their ire up. Maybe they were drunk from the night before. Hell, maybe they were drunk from that morning and they just decided that Brady had to go. But it seems, seems that um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 I totally lost my, uh, oh, it seems like this was not authorized and was not condoned by Brewer uh, or certainly not by McSween. Um, although there was, again, I think it's Florencio Chavez, but I, uh, I'm, I'm sketchy on the memories. There was at least one regulator that said that they remembered McSween saying there'd be a bounty for Brady's life, but no one else ever said that. Um, so April 1st, 1878. So let's use my criteria. February 18th, can Billy still turn back? In other words, can he still change the course uh, of his life and the answer to that is i i believe the answer is yes april 1st 1878 after that can billy change the course of his life can he still turn back after that i believe the answer is no no this is the act for which he will be sentenced to hang and which will cause all of the rest of the things that happen in his life and whether you believe he was uh, justifiably indicted for the murder of Brady because nobody can say that he shot Brady. Well, that doesn't really matter. I mean, it makes no difference. You killed the sheriff's uh, sheriff and deputies. It doesn't matter who you were aiming at, right? Uh, all six regulators should have been indicted equally for the killings of uh, Brady and uh, Hinman. And, uh, and Ben says, Matthews, I think Billy Matthews, if I remember right, Billy Matthews was uh, the one who shot uh, Billy, the kid, out on the street. But I don't think he was wounded. I think it was Jack Long, but I, I can't remember. So there's from we have the, the benefit of hindsight. But from here, we can look back from April 1st, 1878 and say it's now we started the clock, the death sentence clock. And that um, 
Billy is not going to escape this. Now he could have done something different. You can't unkill. It's like, uh, you know, what's the difference between a pregnant nun and a light bulb. You can unscrew a light bulb. Um, you can't unkill Sheriff Brady. You can't go back and say, Oh, you know, guys, I'm sorry. It, you know, it, it's, it's cool. It won't happen again. The only thing you could do is run. You could run to Mexico anywhere uh, and, and live under an assumed name. It happened a lot in the Old West. Uh, and Billy could have, maybe maybe should have, if you believe that, could have uh, gone back on this and just said, hey, that was a bad day. It was a bad decision. I'm going to change who I am. I'm going to get out of here, change my name to uh, <laughs> Joe Hines or whatever, and and I'm never going to come back to New Mexico. So he couldn't undo it. He, he couldn't uh, fix the, the wrong that he was involved in at that point, but he still could have escaped his fate, I think, if he really, really wanted to, if he had the maturity level to do that. Um, and so this to me is what I think the most significant uh, date in Billy the Kid's life, because the reason we know Billy the Kid is because he was a kid. He was a young man and 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 he died young because of this. This was the reason he died at the hand of Pat Garrett. This exact reason, or at very minimum, this was the facilitator. Hey, the Santa Fe ring may have wanted to get rid of him for cattle rustling and horse thieving and just generally bad behavior in the territory, but they had to find a reason to exterminate him. And this was the reason they did that. So let's take a look at uh, some of your comments. Ben says, uh, if his mother did not have TB, they may not have been in New Mexico and she probably would have had a longer life, uh, in which case life may have been different for her sons. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Uh, if Wherever Billy's mother comes down with tuberculosis, uh, Wichita or somewhere like that, uh, maybe a bit farther east, wherever they came from. Uh, yeah, it's probably a different life if your mother is raising you. And maybe even if your mother is able to raise you while she's still alive, you know, Catherine's pretty sick in the last months of her life, that move to silver city does not fend off that high climate, uh, dry climate thing doesn't work for TB. And so the, uh, the, the fact that she was there doesn't mean she could do very much mothering. And it may have been too traumatic on the boys just to be a part of that day after day. Um, so I agree, Ben, that, you know, had she lived, had she not getting, had not gotten sick, probably almost definitely the boys would have turned out different. We don't know different how, but different. George says it was, uh, really challenging a real challenging painting. Billy's portrait is prepping to shoot Brady on April 1st. It sealed his fate. Um, yeah, yeah. And that, and it's a great painting by the way george uh if you send me well i don't know if you <laughs> if you want want it but if you send me a photo because i don't know that i got a photo of the painting i'd love to show it to people because i know not everybody get got to see it um so uh feel free to do that uh, okay uh so april 1st the next date on here so my vote is for even though <laughs> only about four or five of you agreed with me uh, that is my vote for the most significant, most important day in the history of Billy the Kid. December 23rd, 1880 is also another big, big day in the uh, history, the life, death of Billy the Kid. And of course, that's the day that Charlie Bowdry is killed at Stinking Springs. And Billy is essentially given no choice but to walk out and be, you know, try to fight his way out and be killed or surrender. And what is he surrendering Four, he's surrendering to face the charges of April 1st, 1878. He's not surrendering to face charges of cattle rustling or stealing horses or uh, counterfeit money or gambling or anything like that. But none of those charges exist against him. Uh, there probably was some, uh, there, there would have been some additional charges had he lived, but he is facing the charge of killing Buckshot Roberts on a federal charge and then killing Sheriff Brady on a territorial charge. As we know in court, the, the uh, federal charge is thrown out for lack of jurisdiction and doesn't need to be refiled because there's no way that Judge Bristol is letting Billy get out of his courtroom without a guilty verdict and a hang by the neck until he be dead, dead, dead. That's That didn't happen. I mean, they didn't say that, by the way. 
Um, oh, Margaret says, hi, I sure enjoy this program. Well, thank you, Margaret. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate that. Um, so this is a very significant date because Billy will be free again, but it's going to take a long time. This is December the 23rd, and Billy is going to be free. I mean, if you can call it free on April the 28th. So we're essentially four months later that Billy is going to be incarcerated between Santa Fe and La Masia in some pretty horrific conditions, especially in Masia. Um, and, uh, but, some, <laughs> but something important happens there. He gets a haircut before trial and presumably the barber's wife is so infatuated with the fact that her husband cut Billy, the kid's hair. She scoops him up, puts it in a little bag and the Billy, the kid museum in Fort Sumner now has it, or they, you know, or it's not his hair. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out soon. Um, but December 23rd, 1880 significant, it, just a couple days prior, Tom Folliard is killed. But Billy still had the chance to run. I don't believe the story that oh we were we had we were going to a a, a place a few miles away we were going to cook the food we had and then we're going to light out for Mexico or something. I don't believe it. I think it's bullshit. I think that's the kind of thing you say. Oh, we were just about to go and we got caught. And you're looking for sympathy or you're looking to throw people off the trail. I just don't believe it. Uh, Fired was killed. That would be enough for me to go, let's not wait two days. Let's not ride through uh, a, a snowy uh, uh, eastern plains of New Mexico where the, the, the hoof prints of our horse are so clearly visible that anybody could track us. Like, I'm not a tracker. If you take me up on the mesa, you know, out behind my house here and go, okay, well, track this person and then, you know, tell me what they did. I have no idea. I didn't grow up as a tracker. But I wouldn't need to be a tracker to follow hoof prints in the snow, you know, in, in a really remote area, right to a, a, an abandoned rock house in Taiban or Stinking Springs, New Mexico. Uh, so I think that story was all bull. Um, but that day was not. That is the day. That's the last day in my mind that Billy the Kid is actually free. I understand he's going to escape jail and we'll, we'll talk about that. I get that. But now he's living on borrowed time and he's killed two sheriff deputies when we get there. Uh, and I, I, I don't, I don't have any sense of freedom. I have that sense of being on the, being on the run. I can't remember the guy's name, but there was a guy here in New Mexico and this was probably, um, 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, gosh. And, and he killed a police officer here in Albuquerque. I think it was a state police officer. And then he ran for Juarez, Mexico. And he eventually he was caught and extradited. But, um, but I don't imagine that he was free in Juarez. I don't, I don't imagine he was going, oh, this is, you know, now I'm living the good life and I can go and do what I want. I think you're in jail. I think you're just in another kind of jail. You're in a, a prison of the mind because you've got to be aware of yourself at all times. Hey, Misty, thanks for being there. So let's see what Ben has to say. Agree with your dates too. I've often said that Billy the Kid was not Billy the Kid until his actions in New Mexico brought him local fame and newspaper interest. The story began then as legend. That is true. So uh, before we go on, since we're talking about legend, <laughs> hey, uh, I would love for somebody, I'm going to give you the link right now. Look in the chat right there. Order, this is my brand new book, The Ruins of Legend, selling really well here in its first month. It was released on June the 12th. Um, this is the last day of the month. I would love a few more sales to tally up in my best uh, month ever. Um, this is the uh, the story of Martin Teebs and Billy the Kid and and what happened to Lincoln, New Mexico? How did, it, how did it get so bad so quick? And can it be saved and restored to its former glory with this beautiful young lady, Zenobia Romero? tragically beautiful young lady on the cover so you can click the link there to go to amazon right now you can order a copy of the runes of legend and you can uh, make this the best book selling month since my books have been on amazon since january so thank you thank you and if if you've read it already please by all means go back to amazon barnes and noble goodreads a books wherever you bought it and leave a review that would be hugely helpful i can't tell you how much i would appreciate that i can tell you but i don't think you'd believe me so please uh order the book read it love it all right here we go so we're on december 23rd uh, i think this is the last day that morning billy wakes up 
it's crisp, it's cold. They've got a fire going. They got a little bacon and hard tack or whatever. I don't know if they ate hard tack in the old West. That was more of a civil war deal, I think. Um, and, uh, Oh, Rollin, thank you so much. Rollin said, I got my two copies finally a couple, a few days ago. Thank you so much, Rollin. Okay. Uh, and uh, Billy wakes up a free man, and then that is shattered as soon as Charlie Bowdry walks out of the open door of the rock house and is killed. And Billy and his associates now realize um, this is <laughs> this is not going to be a, a trip down to a sunny Mexico. We've got we've got bigger problems, and uh, that is a significant date. But only two percent of you. That's that's three votes might, might not even be three votes uh, depending on how this thing runs the averages but only two percent of you believe that to be a significant date i or the most significant date i think it's very significant because the if if april 1st is the beginning of the end april uh, i'm sorry december 23rd 1880 is about the end of the end in other words this is where it excel everything accelerates from this point forward and had billy made a few different choices even after killing brady even after surviving the lincoln county war even after becoming the the captain of what was left of the regulators even after the aborted deal with lou wallace even even after even after every single time that kid could have gotten on his horse and he could have ridden south and we never would have seen him again. Never. As long as he could have kept his nose clean. He could have gambled his way to Mexico. He had allies uh, you know, all throughout eastern New Mexico. So he certainly could have made it to the border safely enough. He was a gregarious kid. People liked him. He had skills as a gunman, as a cowboy. He, he, he was, he was a, a worthy individual. But he just never took that chance uh, once he once he slipped into a life of crime. Okay, the next date, April 28th, 1881. We all know that as the date that Billy escapes the Lincoln County Jail. And it's not actually a jail. They still have a jail at that point, but uh, the, uh, they're, you know, they, they're keeping, uh, that's where the sheriff's office is. I guess it's a jail downstairs. The sheriff's office is upstairs. The armory is upstairs and Billy's chained to the floor upstairs. Um, that's the day Billy escapes the Lincoln County Jail, killing both J.W. Bell and Bob Bully Bob Ollinger. And that is essentially the day he becomes Billy the Kid, right? That's the that's the big headline that this this uh, this criminal, this crook, this outlaw, this man sentenced to death. Uh, they uh, uh, he he's slain his he's shackled hands and feet to the floor now we know he's not at the time and he kills both of his guards overpowers them shoots them and kills them and escapes while the sheriff is out of town it's it's such sensationalism that some people can't even believe it um uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read the comments here. Yeah. People can't even believe like how, how does a guy in that situation, a kid, Billy, the kid, how does a kid make that happen? How does he accomplish that? And the answer is we don't exactly know. <laughs> I mean, we, um, we have done a recreation. You can go back and look at that kind of a forensic evaluation of the, uh, uh, of the crime scene and what and what may have happened, but nobody knows for sure what happened. And so you can debate that as well. Was there a gun in the outhouse? Did Billy get Bell's gun? Did Billy hit Bell with the shackles and then get his gun? Did, you know, whatever. You can, uh, you, for all eternity, you can debate those and we're not going to know. We're never going to know. You'll only have an opinion. Um, but that is the day that we go from William Bonney to Billy the Kid. That's Billy the Kid. And he'll only have that moniker for another few months and less than three months. Well, he's pseudo free, um, but uh, th this is a big one. And 14% of you, so I'm going to call that, I don't know, 16 votes, 17 votes, somewhere along there, uh, believed that that was the most significant date in 
the history of Billy the Kid. Um, let quick few comments. Oh, Lee, thank you so much. The book is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Sylvia, Barnes and Noble. Sylvia, they don't carry it in the Barnes and Noble stores, but they do carry it on barnesandnoble.com. So if you just go there and type in my, or just my last name, Judicis, E-G-I-U-D-I-C-I-S-S-I, or the Ruins of Legend, it'll take you there and you can have them deliver it right to your house. I think they deliver them for free. So hope you enjoy that. Uh, Rollins says, uh, April 28th, not Bill and Ollinger's favorite. No, they certainly don't. Uh, <laughs> that would not be, if we could talk to them, that would probably be the uh, worst day of their lives. Um, Ben says, don't you know, the kid was beginning to sweat that rope would hate to be in that position, having to wait your own execution. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, peek out on the street, see where the gallows is being built. Of course, Garrett's is ostensibly out of town collecting taxes at white oaks and getting lumber for the gallows <laughs> that seems like a stupid story it really does first of all as we've talked about there were sawmills closer to lincoln than white oaks was but i mean it just seems ridiculous it's like the the warden going for uh, uh going out to ace hardware to get a leather strap for the for the helmet to electrocute somebody like uh, okay guys I'm going to go out and we need a new leather chin strap. And so I'm going to go to the sporting goods store and get one. Uh, and you guys just keep an eye on the prisoner until I get back. Like the warden should stay there <laughs> and the warden's best guard should stay there. And they should send some underling, some lackey to get the chin strap. And the same thing I think holds true with Garrett that, <laughs> you know, send somebody else. You don't look, you could collect taxes a few days later. By the time you collect the taxes, uh, uh, log them in Lincoln, you, you know, you, that this has to be sent by uh, mail, probably some secure type of courier. It's going to be a week, two weeks, three weeks before it gets to Santa Fe. Like, wait a couple more weeks. Wait another one or two weeks to do that. Go ahead and buy the lumber, order it, do whatever. But collect taxes? Eh, I, it seems it sounds a little thin to me, but who knows? Uh, but a very significant date and the most, I would say the most incredible um, uh, incident in the life of Billy the Kid, not killing Joe Grant, not killing Sheriff Brady, you know, as, as uh, distasteful as that was, uh, not killing Wendy Cahill in self-defense, none of those things. But this, uh, this idea of um, you know, I'm going to overpower my, I'm this kid. I'm going to overpower two grown men, get their guns, kill them. And then ride out of town untouched is incredible. Incredible. Uh, Misty has a, an interesting, uh, take on it. Maybe Garrett had a premonition Billy would escape and didn't want to be in the line of fire. Well, that certainly could be too. I'm not much on premonitions, Misty, but some people are. And, and, uh, uh but I, I, you know, you could probably, if you, I'm trying to frame this correctly. If, if you're Garrett and you're thinking, man, I can't hold this guy, like something bad's going to happen. Why not just station your guys at the stairs and the windows and then leave Billy uh, unchained, right? Uh, empty all the guns in the armory or something, and then just let him try to run out and then shoot him and kill him. Like, like he's going to die anyway. You could just set it up. So it looked like he escaped rather than running away because Garrett was not known as a coward. He really wasn't. He never was. And he was not known as a liar. I mean, not in those days anyway. So he may have been uh, kind of an un, uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is. He might not have been the nicest guy, but he was generally well-respected as a lawman. Um, but, uh, you know, if he had a premonition, then get rid of him, you know, by gunfire before you hang him. And, um, and then you you don't need <laughs> you don't need a premonition. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, Billy was a fighter and a lone wolf in many ways. He knew something was going to happen. He had to, he knew if something was going to happen, he had to make it happen. I imagine Garrett didn't much like sitting around there. More so with the kid chained. Um, yeah, I mean, did Garrett want to sit around for two more weeks? And just stare at, you know, a guy that uh, he was going to uh, slip a noose around his neck or somebody would do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's a fair point. Maybe Garrett was getting bored or maybe Garrett was going, uh, this is 
this sucks. Like, I don't want to keep, I don't want to stare at the kid every time I walk up the stairs um, because it's uncomfortable. So I'm going to go do something productive, but it, it, no matter what, <laughs> hindsight, horrible decision, absolutely horrible decision. All right. And that brings us to number five, July 14, 1881, that night, the night that launched uh, a thousand legends, a uh, number of different stories, um, all sorts of uh, conspiracy theories and those kind of things. Um, this is a very important uh, date in the history of Billy the Kid in that it was his last night on earth. And, and we are uh, two weeks from today, <laughs> two weeks from today, we'll be uh, at the uh, cemetery. Come on down and we'll be uh, seeing if Billy or any spirits or messages or anything pay us a visit on the night of July 14, 2023, somewhere around 1157 p.m. I've been there at that time a few years ago. I did a live broadcast from there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. uh We'll see what happens. But this is a big one, obviously. Um, I think this could have been any day. Uh, but based on what Garrett said, it's incredible how this almost didn't happen. And that Garrett was ready to pack up and go back to Lincoln. He was not. He wasn't convinced they were going to find Billy. Uh, Poe, uh, when Poe uh, went into. Uh, um, uh, was it Fort Sumner? Not Fort Sumner. Gosh, now I lost. Uh, but Poe, people didn't know John Poe. And so he went in, started asking around. People got suspicious. And, you know, all of a sudden they wouldn't give him any information. It, it probably was Sumner. Um, and, and Garrett just felt, well, this is a dry hole. Like we're, we're, we've got nothing going on here. So he said uh, that they probably would have pulled out the next day and ridden back and then reconvened. And had that happened, and please don't give me this, um, uh, don't, don't give me any of this. Oh, Billy was about to ride out. Uh, cause I've read that somewhere. I can't remember who, who said it. Yeah. But Billy, it was a, just about to ride out from Mexico with Paulita, but he had to get some, he had to make some money or something like it's the same thing. I was just about to ride out of the rock house. You know, I was just about to leave New Mexico after the Lincoln County war. I was just this, I was just, I, it, it's too many times crying wolf. Uh, but this came close, according to uh, Garrett's own testimony, to not ever happening. And maybe Billy the Kid would have been killed September 15th, 1881. Maybe it would have been July 17th, uh, 1897. In other words, it could have, who knows where things would have gone. And if this night didn't happen, let's assume that Billy, wherever he was, he, he's with Celso, Paulita, Abrana, uh, in Nasaria, uh, De La Vina. He's with them all, all five of them. <laughs> he's like, he's got a harem. And then he walks into Pete's bedroom and goes, man, I'm, man, I'm tired. Those women tired me out. Who's out on the porch, bang. Um, but let's assume uh, that that doesn't happen. That one little thing, Billy sees Poe and McKinney on the porch and he goes, KNS, KNS, we're not here to hurt you. And he backs away from the house, gets around the corner, runs out the back and is never seen again. I don't think that there's much of a legend of Billy the Kid unless he's killed at some point later. And, and maybe there's, yeah, here's the disappearance. But Jesse Evans disappeared into thin air um, from uh, prison in Texas and he was a murderer. And yeah, I mean, we know Jesse Evans, but go say Jesse Evans in polite company at a party. And most people will go, oh, oh what song does she sing? Um, so it's not like that uh, Billy would have been this, I don't think, this huge legend had this not happened when it did. Now, if it had happened soon after in similar circumstances, okay, maybe. Maybe it could have been some glorious gunfight, Billy and his comrades against Garrett and his deputies firing, you know, as they raced across the plains, like in the uh, uh, in, in the Western movies. Or it could have been Billy and Garrett in a showdown, much like Curly Bill and Wyatt Earp in the middle of the creek there at Tur uh, Turkey Creek, if I remember right. Um, if that even happened that way, then maybe it could be something like that. Go watch Tombstone at the you know last 15 minutes of the film if you want to see that. Um, or maybe it could have been, I don't know, uh, 1915 and a 50-year-old uh, or 52-year-old Billy is sitting on his porch and uh, Pat Garrett's 
not dead. He didn't get assassinated because he wasn't famous for killing Billy the Kid. And he walks up and uh, doesn't say a word and just shoots him, shoots him right in the head and kills him. Like it could have been a bunch of different ways. But this, this middle of the night, one in a million shot. In the you know middle of Fort Sumner, this this remote little outpost um, where Billy is surrounded, presumably by friends, and Garrett gets off the one shot that launches the legend. That's I think the reason why this is so important. And sixty eight percent, almost seven out of ten of you, believe that this was the most significant <clears throat> date in Billy the Kid's history. Now I'll bet you that some of the people. Um, that said this think it's because they said it because he uh uh because he escaped that night right like the people that believe in the, you know the other the other people who are not billy the kid probably think oh well that's important because that's the night of the escape that's when the big uh the big uh cover-up happened um <laughs> in fact ben says he would have probably went up san juan hill <laughs> with teddy roosevelt yeah that's probably right um so whatever your reason is uh, this is to you the most significant date, but in my mind, July 14, 1881 happens because of April 1st, 1878. April 1st, 1878 is where the, uh, it's like, uh, when you have the dam and you, you pick out a rock and you get a hole in the dam and the water starts coming through and you can't fix it. It may not come out very fast. It may take a long time for that water to erode the rest of the dam, but make no damn mistake, <laughs> that damn dam is coming down one day. And that's what happened to Billy. And it took three years, um, th a little over three years for that to happen. But it's like somebody set the clock and it's ticking. Remember the show 60 Minutes? Um, tick, 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 like every break, that's kind of what had happened in retrospect to Billy. And uh, they just weren't going to let him go. I don't know if, uh, and no disrespect to uh, Sheriff Brady's family. I think Sheriff Brady was a was a, a decent guy and probably a pretty good sheriff, and he certainly was uh, a, a a great American. I mean, he came here from Ireland. He served multiple uh, enlistments in the war in defense of his country. So, uh, you know, pick on him for whatever you want for being a tool of the house, but he was an honorable man. Um, but. Uh, yeah, and I forgot where I was going <laughs> with that point. But that that uh I I just wonder how much the Santa Fe ring, how much Captain Lee who convinced and uh uh who convinced uh, uh John Chisholm and Captain Lee who convinced uh, Garrett to run for uh run for uh, Lincoln County Sheriff. I wonder how much they cared about Brady. In other words, did they go, hey, we've got to avenge the death of Sheriff Brady of Lincoln County. And they go, Brady, wasn't he like three or four sheriffs ago? I think it was more of that, that Brady was the mechanism to capture Billy or to hang or kill him, but he wasn't the reason. I think the reasons were far more significant as I've talked about in the past, you know, with, with, just his over uh, cattle stealing, horse thieving, um, possibly counterfeiting those kind of things. And overall, it gave the territory, I believe, um, attention that they just didn't want anymore. You want to become a state, you got to get your you got to get your house in order. And having a guy splashed in the national headlines that's murdering his guards and then uh, running around New Mexico with impunity is not getting your house in order. It's just not. And so July 14, 1881, very important day in the life and death of Billy the Kid. But I still look at that second date, April 1st, as the one that sealed his fate, although he didn't know it at the time. And by the way, if you were to, to rename this, which date is most important in the history of Charlie Bowdry, pal of Billy the Kid, I think it's the exact, uh, it's not, I think it's uh, April 4th, uh, just a few days later, because Bowdry is uh, indicted for the killing of Buckshot Roberts. And of course, never knowing, he's killed just months before he might have gone to trial and had that charge thrown out for a jurisdiction issue. And Bowdry might have walked away. 
Manuela might never have moved to San Patricio, married somebody else, had a bunch of kids. Maybe Charlie and Manuela Bowdry become the governor and first lady of New Mexico, or maybe Bowdry becomes sheriff of uh, uh, San Miguel County. Like uh, so many possibilities, but that uh, the uh, April four um, killing of Buckshot Roberts at Blazers Mills that puts an end to that for Bowdry, and he goes to Garrett. It, it, they meet outside of Roswell just weeks before he's killed. And he says, look, I want to go straight. And Garrett says, get rid of the rest of your gang. You can't, you can't be seen with them. You can't associate with them. And I'll go to the citizens and uh, I, I'll ask for their help in helping you surrender and get a fair trial and, you know, do the, do the best you can to turn your life around. And Bowdry doesn't take him up on it. He said he even says to Garrett, he says, well, you know, I, 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 I can't help but feed them if they come by the ranch, the Yerby ranch, like I can't turn my back on them. And uh, I could just imagine Garrett walking away, shaking his head going, what do you want me to do then? You want to still consort with known felons and murderers? You're a murderer yourself. You want help to get out of your charges, but you can't ditch the rest of the bad guys. Come on. That's what I imagine Garrett is either thinking and I wish that's what he would have said to, to Charlie. And in my mind, Charlie's this little guy and Garrett's six foot five or six in his boots. And, and uh, I think he looks down at him and goes, dude, seriously? Like you want help getting out of a murder charge on federal land and you want to go straight, but you still want to consort with known murderers of law enforcement officers. That's your, that's your pitch to me. Come on. So, uh, those dates, very important. So there you go. Um, those are the, uh, at least the ones that I believe are the most important dates in the history of Billy the Kid. Um, but Misty James says having pals ain't easy. Well, ain't that the truth? It sure is not. And uh, if nothing else, Charlie was, uh, uh, he was faithful to his buddies right till the end. Of course, that didn't work out too well for him, but, but I, you know, I, I wish, I wish, I don't know what he wished. I wish I would have listened to Garrett. I wish I wouldn't have made Billy's scrambled eggs and bacon that morning. He and the guys came to the ranch. I wish Manuela was here to give me a hug. I wish uh, I would have bought Amazon stock when it was $2 a share. I mean, who knows what Charlie wished, but uh, we're not ever going to find that out either. Unless somebody builds a time machine, and if you do, then you'll be like my buddy Martin Teebs <laughs> in the room. Well, he doesn't have a time machine. He just has the ability to travel through time. And uh, he is uh, traveling uh, to old Lincoln, uh, to new Lincoln, and only to find out, oh, my gosh, this place is, is gone. It's in ruins. There's no... There's no Murphy Dolan store. There's no Tunstall store. There's no tourism. There's no, there's this place is destroyed. And I did this. Can he undo it? And can he undo it at Billy Palooza held right in Lincoln? Yeah, he might be able to, but you're going to have to read how and see if you're in the book too, uh, because many of you are. The link is right there in the chat. So please feel free to, uh, uh, to go and uh, go and order it. Ben says, <laughs> I imagine Charlie wished they would have missed when they shot at him. I wish, I wish you were a worse shot, Garrett. Yeah, that's true. That's, um, that, that's the first uh, issue at hand, I guess, in that situation. So <laughs> I would have to say you're probably, you're probably right about that, Ben. All right, gang. So uh, we are uh, here for all things Billy the Kid pop-up live show on Friday night. A um, couple things to remember. No uh, live Monday show. We're going to every other week format. So it'll be a week from Monday, which in my mind will be the 10th, I think, of July, our next live show. That doesn't mean we won't come here sometime in between if we've got something good to say uh, or something not even good to say. That's up to you, I guess. Uh, but uh, July the 14th, if you're coming down to Lincoln, uh, some of you I already know, you don't have to message me again you can if you want billy the kid rides again at gmail.com that's the address of the show billy the kid rides again at gmail.com go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe um 
that would be really helpful too. Uh, if you're so inclined and you want some of the more uh, investigative uh, factual videos, well, by all means, hit the join tab on the main page and become a channel member. That really helps support the uh, on-site stuff that we do. Um, I got something really fun coming up on the 14th as well. Not that I'm doing, but I was with the guys from Culls Paranormal. You remember them from doing the uh, Billy the Kid movie brackets. You know, what was the best Billy the Kid movie? Well, we did, we did a deep dive into Young Guns, uh, discussing the film. Uh, I was a panelist, as was Jarrell Vosborg. And Jarrell played Billy the Kid in the Nat Geo special, Billy the Kid New Evidence. Um, and uh, so it was really cool to get his uh, his take on you know, filming that and what he knew about Billy. And and he'd watched Young Guns for the first time <laughs> the night before we taped that. But that'll be uh, on July the 14th. Look up the, the boys on Culls Paranormal Studios. And of course, we'll have a link to it right here on the channel when uh, when that time comes. But July 14th, we'll be in Lincoln. Uh, we got to, it, it's not an official deal. Just show up, right? There's no, <laughs> no fees or anything. There's nothing to sign. Just come on down and hang out with us. Uh, uh, three 30, we're going to take a tour of the, uh, uh, old Maxwell house site and, uh, old Fort Sumner, although there's nothing left of it, but I will try to, uh, recreate it in your mind for you. So you can see the way things were. Um, we will have dinner in town. Uh, uh Brandon was nice enough to uh, make us a reservation. I think we've got a table for 12. So if you're the unlucky 13, you can sit on my lap. Yes. That includes you, Rollin. <laughs> Now we'll find space for you. Uh, uh, roughly 8 p.m. We'll uh, go on a tour of the cemetery. I'll take you and show you all the, the little uh, idiosyncrasies, things you might not have known about that cemetery. It's way more than just Billy the Kid. And uh, then between that and 1130 or so, I guess you're on your own to do whatever. I'm not really sure. But uh, we'll meet back there at 1130 at the cemetery. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, forever. There's no, they never close the gate. And we'll uh, sit down with old Billy at the iron cage there and see, I don't know. We'll just see what happens. See, maybe we'll hear a furious gunfight uh, coming from the trees a few hundred yards away. And we'll know that, um, that brushy Bill was right. Maybe we'll hear two shots and we'll know that Garrett was right. Or maybe we'll hear nothing and we'll know that John Miller was right because he was still recovering from wounds received days prior and was on his way to Las Vegas to marry the love of his life, Isadora. Who knows? Um, but uh, I think we'll have a fun time and we'll probably do a little live broadcast from there. Maybe like a uh, YouTube live or Facebook live or some live. We won't do a dead broadcast. So uh dress up in your Billy best <laughs> or worst. And um, yeah, it should be a fun time. All right, gang. Uh, this has been enjoyable. Thank you. I was, uh, I was interested to see what the uh, results were. And now that you've all seen my poll, um, you know exactly what I was talking about. So <laughs> oh, God. What an, what, I just, just an idiot. Not me, not you. So I will see you next time on all things uh, Billy the Kid. Um, oh, we got to get serious for a minute because Ben has decreed we should. I suspect it would be a poignant moment to give one the feels knowing that once happened there. Well, that's true. I mean, joking, all joking around aside. Um, yeah, I mean, a man lost his life. Uh, a, a, a kid, a young man lost his life. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's not something to make light of, um, but we'll still have a good time. Because as Rollin said, it's the Billy the Kid dead stream from Fort Sumner Post Cemetery on July 14. Yeah, we'll have to rename it, I guess. Um, and so we'll do that as well. But in any event, in the meantime, I am your host of all things Billy the Kid. My name is Michael Anthony Judas. To see you one more time, I really would appreciate you. If you haven't, go ahead and order The Ruins of Legend. If you love it, gosh, this is book eight in the series. You got seven more to catch up. And, uh, you know, book nine is in the works now. So you're going to have you're going to have plenty to read if you get hooked. And if you're not, I don't know, give it to an enemy. Give it to somebody you hate. But uh, uh, great to see you all. Thanks for joining me on all things Billy the Kid, and I will see you next time. Bye.